Hi everyone, welcome to Medical Microbiology. Today we will discuss chapter 16 which is disorders in immunity. So on chapter 14 and 15 we talk the normal action of our immune system. Now we will discuss some disorders in our immune system. Okay. It can be divided into two types. The first one is under reaction. So under reaction means our immunity or our immune system is actually not working uh, properly. Maybe first the T cell okay, or the immune system do not survey our body. Okay. Second, maybe it is caused by loss of immunity, like for example, deficiency of T cell or B cell, or maybe both of these T and B cells just under reaction the next one is actually overreaction it means that our immune system actually overreactive to foreign molecules normally that foreign molecule usually do not cause disease to us but our immune system try to destroy them this is what we call the overreaction or sometimes it is also called as the hypersensitivity there are four types of hypersensitivity the first one is called a type 1 hypersensitivity and it is caused by the uh, antibodies especially the IgE that is over reactive so that's type one the second one is called the type two hypersensitivity it is also caused by antibody that is over reactive in this case the IgM that is really over reactive for type two hypersensitivity the third one is called the type 3 hypersensitivity. It is also caused by the antibodies, mostly the IgG that is overreactive. And the last one, type 4, this is the only one that is caused by the cell, which is the T cell that is overreactive. Okay, just remember type 1, 2, and 3, it is caused by the antibodies, okay, or the Ig. The type 4, this is the one that is called by cell, which is the T cell that is overreactive. Okay, we start, okay. Uh, Again, this is just a, a picture, disorders in immunity. Again, it is divided into two conditions. The first one is under reaction. Okay, so maybe caused by lack of surveillance. And if this happens, usually it will cause cancer. So cancer is usually caused by the lack of surveillance uh, of our immune system. The second one is the loss of the immunity, maybe loss of T cell or loss of the B cell. Okay, so our body do not produce T cell or B cell, or maybe loss of both B and T cell. And this is what we call the immunodeficiency so immunodeficiency disease caused by lack of 
our immune system. And the second type of these uh, orders in immune system is the overreaction. If it is caused by the B cell, remember B cell, they produce antibodies. Okay, or Ig. Then it's going to be type 1. Okay, type 1, which is caused by the overreactivity of IgE, antibody E. Uh, type 2. This is also caused by the antibody, especially antibody M, IgM. And type 3, and this is also caused by the antibody, mostly the IgG that is overreactive. So this is the first type of overreaction that is caused by the hypersensitivity or overreaction of our antibodies. The second type, it is caused by overreaction of our T cell. Okay, so the T cell here, and this is what we call as a type 4 hypersensitivity. Okay, we start with under reaction. Remember, there are two types. The first one is lack of surveillance. You still remember that our immune system, they usually survey our body. If there is something happen, then they will try to destroy that foreign cell. And the surveillance usually done by TC and the T help. Okay, so when the TC survey our body, if they recognize something happen, like maybe uh, the cell that reproduce or divide it uncontrolly, like a cancer cell, then the TC will destroy the cancer cell. However, if the TC is actually lazy, Okay, which is do not really perform the function to survey our body, then the cancer will develop. Okay, so the cancer mostly develop because of our T cell, especially the TC that do not perform the surveillance. Okay, so just remember this process, so how the cancer actually uh, occurs. This is normal uh, condition over here where the TC, okay, they survey the cell. So let's say this is our cell and then the TC will have the receptor to uh, recognize the marker of here okay so the marker of here so when there is nothing happen then the tc will say okay you you don't have a problem but if there is something happen like for example cancer cell develop over here okay then the tc recognize this problem it will produce the toxin and this toxin will destroy this cancer cell Okay, so that the normal uh, action in our immune system where the TC actually always survey our cell, our system, if there is cancer cell, it will destroy that cancer cell. So just for information, all cells in our body have the capability to be cancer cell. And the reason we do not have cancer because of the TC that always perform it function to survey and also to kill this cancer cell. Now what happens if the TC is actually not active? Okay, so lack of surveillance. Okay, 
So the T is here, and then the cancer cell develop over here. So the cancer will grow because the T C will not kill this cancer cell because of like of this cell. So this is how the cancer develops. So this is one of disorders in immune system. So some people maybe have the TC that do not really perform the surveillance and destruction of cancer cell and they will develop the cancer. The second type of underreaction it is loss of immunity. And this is also known as immunodeficiency disease. Okay, the, the, there are two categories of this immunodeficiency. If it is happening since uh, embryonic development, okay, this is called the primary immunodeficiency. So usually that person will be born with this deficiency. So he actually unable to protect himself against disease because he does not have uh, the immune system, okay, uh, the part of the immune system. The second category is called the secondary immunodeficiency disease, which is the disease is actually acquired after birth. Okay, so uh, when he was born, he actually have a normal immune system. But after that, there is something happen, for example, maybe infection of HIV. Okay, when this person has infection of HIV, then this HIV actually will kill or destroy many T helper. And because this person do not have T helper, then he will develop the immunodeficiency. which is AIDS. Okay, so AIDS is the famous example of secondary immunodeficiency disease. Okay. We start with the primary immunodeficiency disease, which is someone that born with this condition. He does not have maybe B cell, or T cell, or maybe both. So it doesn't have both B cells and T cell. And if the, he doesn't have both T cell and B cell, it is called a severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. So he actually lack of both B cell and T cell. Example of the one that only lack of B cell is a gamma gluconylemia and usually these patients will unable to protect himself against uh, mostly bacterial infection. So he must have a lot of bacterial infections. The one that do not have T cell okay, or T cell defects, okay, uh, they usually or he usually have a lot of viral infection okay, and also parasite. Okay, so this is the uh, difference between B cell defects and T cell defects. For the one that do not have both, then it is going to be uh, severe, which is unable to protect himself against infectious diseases. Basically, this person will mostly die because of infection during early ages. As a, this is examples of this immunodeficiency. This is primary immunodeficiency disease okay, during the embryonic development. This person maybe do not uh, produce the T cell, but the T cell is actually do not develop into the thymus gland. 
And if it is happening, then this person has a disease called the Dijors syndrome. If this person is able to produce T cell, and the T cell is actually developed in the thymus gland into uh, mature T cell, but unable to you know, perform the function, then this person has the disease called the ADA. And again, mostly if they do not have the T cell, a lack of the T cell activity, he will have a lot of viral infection, okay? uh, parasite like fungal infection, uh, protozoa infection. Okay, so this, the one that do not have T cell or lack of the T cell activity. Now, how about the one that do not have a B cell? So if it is happening very early, then it is called the congenital gamma glucosinemia. Okay. If it is happening after development into the uh, <coughs> mature B cell, okay, then the condition is called the hypo gamma glucosinemia. And again, usually if he does not have the B cell activity, he will have a lot of bacterial infection during his life. So his, uh, the infection will be uh, happening a lot. So recurrent bacterial infection. Now, how about? Okay, so let's see again that this devils, the name of the disease, if it is B cells deficiency, the receptor disease and the receptor primary immunodeficiency that is caused by the B cell defects, a gamma globulinemia, a hypogamma globulinemia, and some selective immunoglobulin deficiency. That if it is the lack of B cell action or activity, if it is lack of the T cell activity or T cell defect, maybe thymic aplasia or chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Uh, this is called also the germ the germ syndrome of the person. If it is both B cell and the T cell defects, then the disease called the SCID severe combined immunodeficiency disease. Example is the ADA deficiency, XSCID deficiency, uh, ataxia syndrome. Okay. This is examples of uh, boy that have this SCID. His name is, I think it's David, the bubble boy. So when he was born, uh, uh, doctor actually know that he has this SCID and doctor put him in a uh, kind of place that is protected from infection, like in the aquarium, something like that, okay? Uh, in the place that uh, cover with the plastic and, you know, uh, and the doctor try to learn and try to protect him from infection because he actually did not have the ability to fight any type of infection. So doctor actually able to keep him for eight years. But after eight years, he actually finally uh, passed away due to the infection. You can imagine, you know, doctor already tried to protect him in a very secure, sterile place, but still he actually got the infection. He passed away because of this uh, infection. So this is a very severe condition. And usually if it is not helped, uh, the patient will die soon after he get uh, born. Okay, the secondary immunodeficiency, this is the immunodeficiency that acquired after birth. And the famous example is AIDS. Okay, 
So AIDS is actually destroy the T helper. And then the people with AIDS, they usually die because of the infection, not because of the HIV itself, but because of just a regular infection, maybe diarrhea, pneumonia, uh, influenza. It can cause, uh, it can kill the AIDS patient. Another example is leprosy, tuberculosis, uh, measles, and other diseases like the one that may be uh, causing cancer and diabetes. And maybe due to the nutrition deficiency, stress, pregnancy, and aging that also can causing the immunodeficiencies. But the most severe one is the AIDS. Okay, acquire immunodeficiency disease. This is due to infection of HIV viruses. Okay, again, how AIDS develop. Okay, remember when the HIV virus enter into the cell, it has special receptors on the T helper. So T helper over here has special receptor for the HIV. So the HIV virus will attach and enter into T helper and destroy many T helper okay, until it's very low concentration. Then that person will develop the AIDS. When the T helper destroyed, then the T helper will not be able to activate the T and the TC. The T helper over here will not able to activate the B cell okay, to produce the antibodies over here. Okay, so people with AIDS, then it will not be able to destroy the virus and kill the virus uh, by producing these uh, antibodies. So basically, uh, patient AIDS, AIDS patient will not be able to protect himself against many infections, many diseases. And again, mostly they will die because of the regular infection. Okay. Uh, we finish with the underreaction. Now we discuss the second type of uh, disorders in immune system, which is overreaction or hypersensitivity. Again, there are four types of hypersensitivity. Okay? The first one is called the type one hypersensitivity. And this is mostly known as allergy. So allergy is not normal. And this is actually abnormality. This is a disorder in immune system. Again, the allergy usually caused by the IgE that is hyperreactive. Okay. The second one, it is called the antibody mediated um, hypersensitivity, and this is mostly caused by the IgM, and that is hyperreactive. Example is the blood group incompatibility, which is if someone with type A blood give transfusion to type B blood, then the blood will not match. Now, the antibodies of the, the receiver, the recipient will actually try to destroy the red blood cell of the donor. Okay, so the blood that enters the human body is actually and not uh, something that is dangerous okay? uh, if it is sterile blood. So, but the IgM try to destroy this blood and causing problem to the recipient. So this is the type 2 hypersensitivity. The next one is type 3 hypersensitivity. It's also known as immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. This is mostly caused by the IgG that is hypersensitive. 
and this one mostly causing disease what we call the autoimmune disease so many autoimmune disease is actually in type 3 hypersensitivity which is the antibodies IgG that is really really reactive and try to destroy any cell sometimes that cell is our own cell therefore it's called immune disease and the last one is type 4 hypersensitivity or T cell mediated hypersensitivity and this is the only one that caused by the cell which is the T cell remember the other one over here the other three is caused by the antibodies IgE IgM IgG and this one the only one that caused by the T cells Okay, we start with the type 1 hypersensitivity, okay, which is allergies, and this is caused by the hypersensitivity of IgE. Okay, so the IgE or antibody E that is really, really hyperreactive. There are two classes of allergy. The first one is called the atopy, which is local allergy, and anaphylaxis. This is a systemic allergy, which is goes to the uh, blood circulation. Okay, so just remember that allergens this is mostly harmless this is not pathogenic uh, microorganism so this is mostly harmless so for normal people you know this allergens will not cause any disease so for normal people you know they actually do not try to destroy these allergens but for some people with the hypersensitivity the ig really really hyper reactive is try to destroy allergen okay and when they try to destroy allergen, it will produce what we call the allergy mediators, like histamine, for example. And this histamine actually will produce what we call the allergic reaction. So some people that have allergy, they usually uh, produce the allergy mediators like histamine, bradykinin, and then finally he will develop this allergic reaction, like for example, uh, runny nose, uh, itchy eyes, and etc. Okay. So the allergens, maybe we will see how they actually enter into our system. Okay, so the major allergens and their portal of entry. There are many allergens actually uh, that can cause allergic uh, reaction or allergy. Uh, if it is go through the uh, respiratory tract or inhalants, is like pollen, dust, mold spore, uh, dandels, animal hair, uh, formalin, aerosol. They usually use the uh, respiratory tract. Therefore, they are called as a inhalants because we inhale that allergen. If it is go to food or drink, it's called the ingestion. Maybe food like peanut, uh, 
that selfish soy bean with some people maybe allergy to eggs for example okay i put additive drugs uh, like maybe oral drug aspirin penicillin for example yeah. if it is injected yeah, like a bee sting for example it is called the injector so bee sting insect bite drugs injected drug like uh, vaccination maybe okay serum enzyme hormone injected hormone that is called as the injectors and the one that attach or contact to skin for example they are called as the contactants like maybe topical drug the antibiotics that we put on the skin cosmetic heavy metals uh, detergent formalin rubber some people have uh, allergy to uh, rubber solvent nice so this is a classification of allergens based on the portal of entry which is inhalants ingestion injection and contactants now the mechanism of allergy it's like to develop into two stages the first stage is called the sensitizing dose this is when the patient or the person have the contact the first contact with the allergen and it will develop the dose that will go to the provocative dose which is the development of the allergic reaction so the allergic reaction is happening in this uh, provocative dose and the sensitizing dose actually no sign or symptom of allergy okay it's just sensitizing this is the the, the first development of uh, allergy and usually this sometimes take uh, maybe days weeks okay months some people maybe years uh, after that contact they develop the uh, allergic reaction which is the second stages over here but for some people maybe after several days or you know getting the first dose then right away they develop the allergic reaction which is the provocative dose so okay so so this is no wonder that you know some people like to develop the allergy after several days some people after several weeks some people maybe after several months even some people maybe years after the contact you know he does not develop the uh, allergy okay it's really different on the person the condition of that person and the symptom of allergy usually rest itching redness increased mucus discharge yeah runny nose pain swelling uh, difficult uh, breathing especially if he has asthma so this is some symptom and sign of allergy now we're gonna see this process again the stage okay? the first stage which is the sensitizing dose this is when the person receive the first contact with the allergen let's say this is pollen okay so pollen enter into the uh, respiratory tract when they go to our system then the b cell remember b cell and the ige is the one that uh, try to destroy the allergen okay fight again allergen so this the b cell have the receptor for these allergens like common okay? so when it receives the attack or attach this pollen and what happened the b cell you remember this b cell will uh, activate the plasma 
B cell, okay, to produce the IgE. So remember, IgE is uh, antibodies. All the antibodies produced by the plasma B cell, and the one that produced due to the uh, allergens reaction is called the IgE. So the IgE will be produced. Okay. Usually there is no sign and symptom in this time. After time, maybe again, maybe days, weeks, okay, maybe months or years, okay, depend on that person. So that IgE will bind to the mast cell, which is the basophil. Okay, so basophil is a type of white blood cell that produce the mediators. Okay. So this IgE will bind to the basophil. And again, if there are many basophil, we take maybe more time uh, to produce this mediator. Okay. So when the basophil or mast cell produce the mediator, okay, so mediators yeah, like histamine, for example, then this mediator will enter into the circulation. It will be carried into several organs like the eyes, causing the red eyes, watery eyes, nose, maybe runny nose, uh, the skin, hive, rises, e.g. So this mediator is actually the one that will give this symptom. And this is happening on the second stage, okay, which is the provocative dose over here. Okay, so that's the stages of allergy. Okay, just remember there are two stages. The first stage is called the sensitizing, which is mostly IgE production, and then provocative dose, which is the release of these mediators okay, from the uh, mast cell or from the basophil. So again, there are two things that is uh, causing that allergy. The first one is the IgE, and the second one is the basophil over here. So remember when we talk about the our immune system, the basophil, which is the white blood cell, and IgE, which is one type of antibody, they work together to uh, destroy the allergens. Both of them is actually the least abundant type of uh, immune system. So basophil is actually the least abundant type of white blood cell, and the IgE is actually the least abundant type of antibody. Okay, again, the, this is the roles of mast cells and basophil in producing the mediator is called the allergy or chemical uh, mediators like the most potent one is histamine okay so this is the list of the mediators that produced by the mast cell and basophil. The most potent one is histamine, then there is serotonin, leukotriene. This is usually for people with asthma. Eh? It's a really uh, dangerous for them. Eh? Leukotriene because it can constrict the uh, respiratory uh, muscle, especially on the uh, bronchus and uh, trachea. And then uh, 
platelet activating factor, prostaglandins, and bradykinin. So these are the chemical that is produced by basophil and mast cell, and this is the one that will cause this sign and symptom of allergy, like rashes, itching, redness, uh, rhinitis, sneezing, diarrhea, shedding tears. As a sign, some sign and symptom of the allergy. Now, if we uh, see one by one, like prostaglandin, this is one mediator. Okay? They usually dilate the blood vessel. Okay? And here to the uh, bronchiolis, okay? also will actually constrict the bronchiolis. Okay? It will go to the nerve cell and cause the uh, headache. So headache mostly caused by this prostaglandin. Other mediators like histamine, serotonin, bradyconin, yeah, go to the uh, blood vessel, it's dilate the blood vessel. Yeah, if it is go to the skin, for example, then the skin becomes red, the redness to the skin because the blood is actually going to this area. If it is go to the respiratory tract, the muscle, they actually constrict the muscle of the bronchiolus, which is the smooth muscle over here. It's causing difficult to uh, breathe. Okay. Uh, it's increased the uh, peristalsis of intestine, causing diarrhea, vomiting. And if it is going to the epithelial cell, is causing the epithelial cell to produce more liquid, which is mucus. So you see runny nose, tear. This is caused by this mediator over here. Uh, Lipotrien, this is typically for the asthma patient, it can constrict right, the bronchioles. So the asthma people will have difficulty to breathe, sometimes causing death. Okay, so these are, again, the mediators that produce the allergic reaction. Prostaglandin usually causing headache, because this is for asthma uh, people. It will constrict the bronchiolis uh, for histamine, serotonin, bradykinin. This is usually the one that causing runny nose, uh, watery eyes difficult breathing, vomiting, uh, and many more uh, reactions, actually. Okay. Again, the most potent mediator is histamine. Okay. Uh, this is the one that usually have a very fast action, you know, uh, with this allergic uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, this is the reason why many allergy medicine okay, have antihistamine. So if you read okay, the uh, allergy medicines, uh, mostly they have the antihistamines uh, in, their, in their drugs, that medicine. Okay, there are several, again, two types of allergy. Yeah, if it is like high fever is called the atopic disease or local seasonal disease. Uh, asthma, one of them. Uh, eczema is another uh, type of allergy. There is also food allergy. Okay. This is mostly caused by food like peanuts, for example. 
and drug allergy. This is caused by the medicine drug, like antibiotic, for example. Okay. And if it is goes to the blood circulation, it is called the anaphylaxis. Example is bee sting, and sometimes it becomes a fatal to the person. Like a bee sting, uh, uh, injected antibiotics and serum injection. This is also can cause uh, systemic anaphylaxis. So systemic anaphylaxis is considered more dangerous than uh, atopic uh, allergy. How to diagnose the allergy? Usually if you go to the allergy clinic, they will test you okay, using what we call the skin test. And, you know, they give you maybe some chemical that coming from different type of allergens, yeah. and we'll test you whether you have reaction or not. So this is positive reaction, okay. This means that you are due to this chemical that, you know, doctor give to you. So this one is negative, negative, negative. You can see the difference on the skin if you have the allergy to the specific chemical that being tested on your skin. Okay. So this test is called the skin fibro test because it's actually the doctor injected something uh, chemical inside into our body. So the test is actually uh, by putting some chemical into our system. Treatment and prevention for allergy. The best one is actually avoiding allergy, which is very difficult. This means that you have to stay home, okay? Do not go outside during the uh, allergy season, for example. So in spring, uh, when you know there are so many pollens available, uh, then in order to prevent yourself against that pollen, you have to avoid that allergen. So stay home, okay? or maybe wearing uh, face mask also will help uh, protect against this allergen. Second is using the drugs that block the action of the media. Many drugs have what we call the antihistamine. So you take the allergy medicine, mostly they have antihistamine. For people with asthma, they also have to take the drug that have anti leukotriene Okay, so the drug usually have this ability to block the mediators like histamine or leukotriene or maybe bradykinin. And the last one is using what we call the desensitization therapy, which is injection of allergen or injection of antibody in order to block the IgE uh, production. Usually, the IgG is the one that will be injected into the system in order to compete with the IgE. So that's the uh, injection of uh, antagonists, which is the synthesis therapy. Okay, this is some um, prevention uh, against uh, allergy, like for example, uh, injection of or the steroid, uh, taking drugs like antihistamine, like aspirin, epinephrine, anti-aspirin, and other type of drug in order to block the histamine or any other mediators. There is also some 
uh, reset showing that taking uh, honey especially local honey will help to protect uh, someone from uh, allergic reaction that is caused by pollen. Uh, For the desensitization therapy, again, usually injecting a specific antibody like IgE, I mean IgG, and this IgG will uh, block the production of IgE or the IgE actually will not bind to the allergen because allergen will bind to the IgG. Eh? If it is bind to the IgG, then this IgG will not bind to the mast cell. So only IgE that will bind to the mast cell. Okay, if this IgE do not bind to the allergen, then there will be no, no production of media. Okay, so this is actually the principle of uh, desensitization therapy, which is injecting injection of IgG that will compete with the IgE. So if the IgE do not receive the allergen, then the mast cell will not produce the uh, mediators like histamine. Of course, the desensitization therapy will not last long because, you know, in an antibody injection usually stay in our body for about maybe three or six months only. So usually the person will have to take uh, several injections in order to protect himself against allergy. Okay, the second type of overreaction or hypersensitivity is called a type 2 hypersensitivity again this is mostly by the IgM okay the overreactivity of the IgM and this IgM they mostly produce eh, in order to protect ourselves from foreign cell okay like for example blood cell so when we receive blood uh, transfusion we actually receive blood cell from someone and it is considered as foreign cell so the IgM okay the IgM will try to destroy this foreign Cell. So this is the basic uh, action of the IgM and they usually try to destroy the foreign cell. So therefore, eh, when we perform blood transfusion, we have to be sure that the IgM will not attack the foreign cell, which is we have to give the compatible blood because the, if the blood cell is compatible, it is not considered as a foreign cell by the IgM. So IgM will not uh, attack that foreign cell. Okay, so we have to uh, study a little bit about blood type. So blood type, there are two types of blood type, which is the ABO blood type. Okay. The second one is called the rhesus blood type. Next, so we start with the ABO blood type. So based on the ABO blood type, there is uh, four blood types, which is A, B, AB, and O. And this is based on the antigens that is present on the red blood cell.
Okay, so maybe we can go to this picture over here. So someone with a type A, if you your blood is type A, then it means that you have A antigens in the right blood cell. So this is red blood cell. Okay, if you are type B, it means you carry the B antigens like this, okay, on your right blood cell. So your red blood cell carry this B antigens. If your blood is type AB, it means that you have both A and B antigens, okay, on the red blood cell. So red blood cell carry that antigen. If your type is O, then it means that you do not have the antigen A nor B on your blood cell. So your blood cell do not carry these antigens. Now, if you are type A, again, you will have antigen A on your blood, your plasma Okay, so the plasma the, uh, will produce antibodies. So the antibodies that will be produced will be not the same as your antigen. Because what? Because the antibody, remember, always try to destroy the antigen. So antigen-antibody reaction. That's the way our system protects ourselves against foreign cell, maybe disease by producing the antibodies over here, okay, producing antibodies. So these antibodies will attack and destroy the antigen. Now, if you have antigen A, of course, you will not produce antibody A. So you will produce antibody B. So you have antibody B. You produce the antibody B in the plasma. If your blood is B, it means you carry B antigen. Therefore, the antibodies that you produce will be anti-A. It will not B because B destroys B. If you have both antigen A and B, which is your type AB, then you will not produce the antibody A or B. So no antibody produced related to this blood, okay? You still produce other antibodies, but you will not produce the antibodies related to blood, okay? Antigen A and B. If your type is O, you do not have antigen, therefore you will produce both A and B antibody. Okay, so that's the, uh, the normal condition in your body. If you are A, it means that you have antigen A, then you produce antibody B. If you are B, you carry antigen B in your blood cell, and you will produce anti antibody A. Okay? If you are AB, it means you have both antigen A and B in your red blood cell, and your plasma will not produce antibodies okay? related to this red blood cell. If your type is O, you do not have antigens in your, on your red blood cell. Therefore, you will produce both antibody A and B. Okay, so you make sure you understand this uh, condition. Now, again, a summary this uh, AB of blood type again. Remember, in your blood, you have red blood cell. This is the most abundant type of cell in your blood. Uh, usually look like this. Okay. You have red blood cell. Okay. Now, if you are type A, then again, you will have antigen A. So let's say brown. Okay. So this is anti 
That's simple. Okay. If you type your blood type is A, it means that your red blood cell carry antigen A. Now, if you are B, again, it's going to be simple. Your red blood cell carry the antigen B. That easy, right? So you, if your blood is B, it means that your red blood cell has the antigen B on it. If you are AB, it means that you have both antigen A okay, and antigen B on your blood. Okay. Now, if you blood O, then no antigen. There is no antigens on your uh, red blood cell. Okay. Now, if you are A, again, remember you have antigen A on your red blood cell, then you will not produce the antibody A. You will produce the antibody that look like this, which is antibody B. This antibody B will be attacking the, this antigen B. Okay, so the shape is the same. Okay, so if you are B, then you will not have antibody B, but you have antibody that look like this, round. Okay, the one that will attack this antigen A. So this one is called the antibody A. Okay. If you are AB, remember you have antigen B and also antigen A like this. Therefore, you will not produce this antibody because if you produce one of them, then your blood will be destroyed. So you will die. So it means that no antibodies. Okay, if you are O, look at this O, there is no antigen, therefore you will be able to produce the antibody A, the one that is look like round, okay, and antibody B. Okay, now this condition can be used to uh, understand the blood transfusion. Okay. Let's say blood transfusion is actually the donor give the blood, which is the red blood cell, to the recipient. Okay. Now, if you are A, okay you should be able to give blood to other people that also A. So it is okay to give your blood to other people that also type A. Okay. Now, if you are A, okay, you try to give blood to B, you give it to B like this, boom. And then what happened? This already A, that is present in people with a type B will destroy this blood. Okay, so basically you will not be able to give your blood to someone with type B blood. Okay, because what? Because the type B blood has the antibody A that will destroy the antigen A from the donor. Now, if you are A, can you give blood to the AB? Over here, of course, yes. Because what? Because AB do not have antibodies. So it doesn't really matter eh? if you give blood over here, there will be nothing that will attack or destroy this blood. So it means that you can give blood to, if you are A, you can give blood to AB. Okay. Now, if you are A, can 
when you give blood to someone with O blood type over here? Of course not, because the A has antigen A over here, and this O have both antibodies. One of them, which is the A over here, will destroy the A blood. Therefore, you cannot give blood to O. So you only can give blood to A and AB. Okay, now how about if you are B? Can you give blood to A? Of course not, because A, B, I mean B have antigen B, and A blood has antibodies B, so it doesn't match. Okay, can you give that to yourself or someone with a B? Yes, so B can give that to B. Can you give that to A, B? Yes, remember A, B do not have the antibodies, then A, B can receive that blood, no problem. Can you give blood to O? Of course not, because O have this antibody B that will destroy this antigen B. Okay, so you cannot give blood to O if you are B. Now, how about if you are AB? Okay. So AB, remember, has both antigen over here. Antigen B, antigen A. Can you give it blood to the A? No, because a have the antibody B that will destroy this antigen B. So you cannot give that to the A people. Now, but can you give that to B? No, because what? You have antigen A over here and the B have antibody A. This does not match. Okay? Can you give that to the AB? Yes, of course. You can give that to AB person. Now, can you give blood to O over here? Of course not, because O have both antibody A and antibody B that will destroy the antigen B and also the antigen A. So you cannot give blood to O. So basically, AB can donor to other AB people only. Okay. Now, how about if you are O? Okay. Remember, if you are O, you do not have antigen. No antigen. It's very smooth like this. Okay. So can you give blood to A? Okay. Remember, A have antibody B. It might destroy your blood. No. Because what? Because you do not have any antigen. No antigen. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. You give it to A with antibody B over here then he still be able to receive it. So you can give up blood to A. Now, can you give blood to B? B have anti antibody A. You don't have antigen. So it should be okay. So you can give that to B. Can you give that to the AB? Yes, both. <laughs> no problem. No antibodies, no antigen. It's very, very safe. Okay. So yes, you can give that to A. Okay. Now, can you give blood to O? Of course, O can give blood to O, even though if O have antibody A and antibody B, but there is no antigen to be attacked. Okay. Therefore, it is safe. So, you can give blood to O. Okay. Now, you can see over here that O can give blood to any type of blood, any blood type. Therefore, O is also known as universal donor because someone with the blood type O he can give blood to any people with any type of blood type okay. now if you see over here you can give it to AB AB can give to AB AB B also can give to AB and A can give to AB. So it means that AB can receive blood from any blood type. It is the reason why the AB is called universal recipient. Okay. 
So someone that can receive any type of blood. So if your blood type is AB, it means that you can receive any blood type. If your blood is B, you are universal donor. Okay? So O is really generous. Okay? For AB, it's only can only give to AB only, okay? but he can receive to uh, from any blood type. Okay, so that's the basic uh, information about the blood type and also blood transfusion. Why A cannot give to B, B cannot give A. Okay, why A B can receive any blood? Okay? So you know this. Uh, theory. Why O can give anybody? Eh? Because O does not have antigen over here. So safe for him to give it to everybody. And then AB does not, does not have antibody. So therefore, he is safe to receive any blood type. Eh? This is information about the donor A, for example. Remember, if the recipient is B, it has the anti, uh, antibody A. This is antigen A. And it's a, a and A will destroy. Okay? So that this antibody actually will destroy this uh, antigen. And what happened? That blood will be clumped uh, in the... People that have get the blood transfusion and finally it might clog the uh, circulation. It can kill that uh, recipient. Another, yeah, the second type of blood type is called the uh, rhesus blood type. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to explain again how it looks like. Okay, uh, rhesus blood type, the same, so if it is positive, he has the red blood cell, let's look like this, red blood cell, okay, if he is positive, rhesus positive, then it will carry antigens like this, okay, let's say this is called the antigens. Uh, okay. Now, the one that negative is mean that he does not have antigen. No antigens. Rh. Okay. Now, because this person has antigen Rh, then there will be no antibody RH, okay, because he has antigen over here. So the one that negative, he or she actually will produce antibody RH. It's going to be look like this. Okay, so this one will attack the antigen RH. Okay, now transfusion of course, the positive can give to the positive. They are the same blood type. So can positive give it to negative? No, because negative has antibody RH over here that will destroy this blood. Okay. Now, how about if negative can give it to the positive? Yes, because what? Because remember, negative do not have antigen. So it is safe to give it to positive. And positive also do not have antibody. It's really, really safe. Yes, the negative can give to positive. Uh, but negative can give to another negative? Yes, of course. Okay. So from this information, then we know that negative is also universal donor. Okay. The positive will be universal recipient. Okay, because this positive, positive receive. And this negative give. 
etc. Now for this information and also from the ABO type information, then you can give the conclusion that the AB, okay, AB negative, I'm sorry, yeah, we talk about the, the O negative is the real universal donor. So if your blood type is O negative, you can give it to anybody. It doesn't really matter. Okay. If your blood type is AB positive, this is the real universal recipient. Okay. You can receive blood from anybody because your blood is AB positive. So your AB will be safe against the ABO type and the positive will be safe for, for the RH uh, type. Right? O negative, the O right, will be safe for giving to anybody in the ABO type and the negative will be safe to give anybody with racist blood type. Okay, now we can relate that information to condition. It's called the hemolytic disease of the newborn. And again, this is based actually on the racist blood type. Uh, remember the previous PowerPoint over here, okay, someone with negative over here, okay, he will or she will produce antibody races okay like this because what because his blood or her blood do not have the antigen okay and the one that positive it will has antigens races okay? but no antibody Okay, no antibody uh, races. Okay, just remember this. So, if it is woman, eh, if it is woman, it means that she is able to produce the antibody RAs. Okay, remember, if it is woman. Now, we can relate that information to this condition over here. So, woman with the RH blood, negative blood type, he able to produce this antibodies races. If he married with men with the RH positive, okay, so the baby mostly will carry the antigen RH in its blood. So what happens, okay, the mother will produce the antibody RH and will kill this baby's blood so the baby mostly will will die because of this and this is what we call the hemolytic disease of the newborn so uh, mother with negative blood type it has to be careful if she has husband with the positive um, blood type because the baby will also carry the positive antigen and the mother will produce the antibody RH, it will destroy this. And usually the baby will will die because of this problem, right? because of the destruction of his blood cell by the mother uh, antibody over here. So usually women that have a negative blood type will receive injection from the doctor okay, in order to protect her baby from this problem, from this disease.
So maybe on the old time, uh, there are some couple that always have uh, miscarriages, miscarriages, miscarriages. This is maybe due to of this problem. So the the mother or the wife actually has uh, negative blood type, and the husband has positive blood type, yeah, recess positive blood type, and the baby usually mostly will be miscarried born you know, die uh, during birth or even uh, during the pregnancy okay and this, this information can also you know can be used for blood typing which is uh, typing your blood uh, knowing what is your blood type so again the blood A have the antigen A. If we put the antibodies A, then it will causing this problem over here. So the blood will be uh, agglutinate or clump. Okay, so uh, if it is compatible, then no, no problem. Okay, no clump. Uh, or agglutination. Okay, so no agglutination. This is uh, okay. So this is broken. Okay, broken blood. Okay, so it can be used for uh, identifying your blood type. Let's say usually we drop, we put three drops of blood on maybe on the disc, okay? So this is drop number one, drop number two, and drop number three. On the drop number one, we put the antibodies A, and drop number two, we put antibodies B, and drop number three, we put antiracies, okay? So we mix them. You see this one is no problem, no agglutination. This is no agglutination. What does that mean? So no agglutination, no agglutination mean this blood is actually O. It's telling you this blood is O because if, when you put the antibody A, there is no agglutination. It means that there is no antigen A. Right? When you put the antibodies B over here, no agglutination. It means that there is no antigen B in this blood. So the blood, the red vessel is just smooth like this. Right? So therefore it is O. Now, when we put the anti resist antibody resistors, and there is a clump, there is a good It's It means that it's carry positive, right? it's positive blood. So therefore, the final identification, this blood will be all positive. Let's say we have another example over here. When we put the antigen A, antibody A, then this blood is clump. So it means that this blood has antigen A yeah, because there is clump. Yeah. When you put on the B, there is nothing happen. So it means that there is no antigen B. So if you have A and no B, it means that this blood is A. Yeah. It's carry antigen A only. So therefore the blood is A. If I here, no, nothing happen. So it means that there is no no antigens are it which is called negative blood right so at the end the final identification will be that this blood is a negative this is how to perform the blood typing okay now this is the table of uh, compatibility for blood transition Okay, so this is, remember, O negative. This is universal donor. Therefore, O can give it to anybody. So O can give it to O, give it to O plus. Uh, okay, so all okay over here. So the O, which is the donor, can give to anybody. Now, and the recipient, then the B, the AB positive, is the one that can receive from anybody. So no problem, right? Okay? But over here, eh, 
and you have to understand that all positive cannot give to the negative because this positive and negative is not compatible. The O and O may be compatible, but positive and negative is not compatible. A can give the O. Okay? So the negative may be compatible, but A is not compatible with O. A and O is not compatible, and positive and negative is not compatible, and etc. Okay, so this is this type of maybe it can help you to uh, perform uh, the blood provision with uh, uh, safe way. Okay, this is the, uh, the list of compatibility of blood transfusion. Okay, now the next one is the type 3 hypersensitivity. Again, this is mostly by IgG of reaction. Okay, so we're going to see the stages and the step of this hypersensitivity. First thing, you know, the antibody, which is the IgG. Okay, IgG will try to process the antigen. So this is antigens. Okay, the IgG antibody. Okay, so this IgG try to uh, process these antigens. When they perform the process, they usually will bring that into specific organ like for example the uh, skin over here okay. so this become what we call the complex of uh, antibodies antigens and also the uh, organs okay so complex this is complex antibody antigen and then it will lodge into specific organ like skin for example and then what happens when it is lost, then it will actually invite the neutrophil to come. And neutrophil, okay, will destroy, try to destroy this complex, but it's also destroying the, the organs. Okay, so it will cause the problem on the organ itself, okay, like in the skin, in the kidney. Uh, joint like RA for example and the heart and it means blood uh, circulation. Okay, so that this neutrophil will try to destroy the complex and also will destroy actually the organ itself. The last one which is the type for hypersensitivity. Again, this is the only one that caused by cell, which is the T cell. And if you want to see the process mostly like this, so like for example, the antigens enter into our system, let's say to the skin, it will be processed by the dendritic cell and the T helper will come this T helper will activate the T cell over here. And the T cell will produce the toxin yeah, that actually try to kill or destroy this antigen yeah, by destroying also the cell over here. And finally, what happens? There will be blister and uh, inflammation on that place. Okay. Uh, example is poison IV uh, is actually T cell uh, mediated hypertense uh, hypersensitivity. The T cell will also try to reject the other organs that is received during maybe transplantations. Okay organ transportation or maybe skin uh, graft. So the T cell try to reject this uh, foreigner cell or foreign cell.
this is two principles okay if the foreign cell is actually like for example uh, the heart transplant resin over here then the T cell the host T cell will try to destroy the heart cell over here okay because it's considered as foreign okay it's called a rejection okay if the one that the donor is actually the bone marrow remember bone marrow produce the t cell and other blood cell so if it is the the organ that is transplanted is actually the bone marrow then what happened the t cell that produced by the donor bone marrow is actually the one that will destroy the host cell maybe this is the bone cell okay so this is the uh, the principles of grafting or transplantation so uh, if it is organ other than bone marrow the host t cell will try to reject that but if it is organ and bone marrow that is transplanted then the t cell that produced by the donor bone marrow is the one that will destroy the host cell okay therefore right, when performing transplantation or graft we have to understand where the cell or the tissue coming from if it is autograph it means the cell is actually of the tissue coming from our self there will be no rejection it's going to be safe okay because it's the same cell or the same uh, tissue like for example if someone have a problem with the skin on his or her face it can be grafted from uh, the skin from maybe a uh, lower part of uh, her body so there will be no rejection because the tissue is coming from itself or the cell is coming from itself it's called the autograph another one that is safe it will not be rejected is called the isograph which is the tissue coming from identical twin eh? because identical twin they actually have the same markers and the t cell will not reject that twin cell so it will be no rejection okay it is allograph it is coming from the same species from human then the t cell will reject that will reject the graft tissue so there will be rejection if it is coming from other individual yes, different species maybe from animal again it will be rejection T cell will uh, reject that tissue Okay. so therefore there is special drugs that usually doctors use during or after the transplantation is called the immunorepressive drug especially if it is graft that coming from uh, other people and maybe from uh, animal organs So now what we, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about the autoimmune disease. This is actually loss tolerance to our own cell. Okay? So our own cell is become uh, is considered as foreign cell by our own immune system. So the, the disease that caused by this problem is called the autoimmune disease. Again, mostly this is type Three, right? type 3 hypersensitivity which is the one that is caused by the IgG okay? the overreaction of IgG okay? so mostly type 3 several type of autoimmune disease like uh, uh, lupus yeah? uh, 
RA minus the graph is MS multiple sclerosis type 1 diabetes this is also autoimmune disease and this is example of systemic autoimmune disease like lupus okay systemic lupus erythematosus uh, this may be how it look like someone that have uh, this type of autoimmune disease another one is RA rheumatoid arthritis this is on the joint tissue so the joint tissue actually being destroyed by our own IgG uh, endocrine autoimmune disease like a grave disease this is also known as the hyper uh, thyroidicity okay which is uh, too much thyroid hormones uh, Hashish, Hashimoto's thyroiditis this is also known as hypothyroidism and less thyroid hormones produced Type 1 diabetes mellitus, this is due to the antibodies that damage the beta cell in pancreas, which is the one that produces the insulin. Okay, so when the cell that produces insulin is being broken, then there will be no insulin production. And it is caused by our own IgG antibodies. Another autoimmune disease is called the neuromuscular, okay? uh, like myasthenia gravis. So the muscle it can be become uh, very weak because of this disease. Okay, so muscle weakness, MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, maybe some paralyzing in some muscles. Okay, the muscular weakness. Uh, difficulty to speed, uh, vision, problem with the vision. And uh, this is a uh, MS. Now I just wanted to show you how this disease uh, occurs okay, or why. Like for example, if you give examples diabetes one, type one diabetes. Does this Antibodies over here, which is the IgG, okay, is actually destroying the beta cell. So this IgG consider this beta cell as a foreign cell. Okay, so it will attack this foreign cell. Remember, antibody will put, uh, will uh, destroy this antigen. So it's considered as uh, antigens over here which is actually not okay so this is loss of the uh, let me see over here okay loss of tolerance to our own cell okay so the, our own cell is considered as a foreign cell by the uh, IgG. So this antibody is actually attack our own cell and destroy this cell. So in this case, the pancreatic cells over here that being destroyed by the IgG. So the beta cell of pancreas being destroyed. Therefore, because the beta cell is the one that produces insulin, there will be no insulin production. Okay? And you know the type 1 diabetes, it is progressive disease. You know, for example, maybe during the um, younger age, okay, that person do not realize that he is beta cell is being destroyed okay and then after several years maybe uh, 12 years or 15 years old he 
start to develop this diabetes. Okay? Uh, within 20, 25, 30 years old, then they become uh, dependent to insulin injection. Okay, so okay, sometimes you know, some people wonder why, you know, when you read uh, a baby, my my kid doesn't have the diabetes and after 12 years old and he developed the diabetes. This is the problem because this destruction thing, okay, will take time. After several years, then it's become uh, the sign and symptoms will occur. Okay, so he will be dependent on the insulin injection after that. Uh, this is Mestenia gravis, is the same thing, which is these antibodies, uh, which is the IgG over here, is actually block or attack the acetylcholine. So normally, acetylcholine will bind to the muscle cell, and then the muscle cell will be able to do contraction. Over here. Now, if there is if the IgG over here actually attacking the acetylcholine, then there will be no contraction. So the cell, the muscle become paralyzed. So this IgG is actually block, uh, block this receptor from getting the acetylcholine. So the muscle become uh, weak, a uh, weaker uh, muscle. So people that have myasthenia gravis, they usually have uh, weaker muscle, a uh, weak muscle during you know, uh, movement, during contraction. I think that's all for chapter 16 and you will have the exam number 4 of chapter 14, 15 and 16. So good luck uh, with your exam. Good try now.